his thoughts become things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I am Jeremy Lopez, and I'm always thankful for each one of you. I'm always thankful that each one of you decided to join with me this time during the week and uh, just sort of, you know, pull up a chair and listen to what I have to say. Because, you know, I love to be able to really get before God, find out, you know, some stuff God is saying, give me the downloads, God, and, and just sort of bring them to each one of you. Because, you know, I realize one thing. We're all we're all learners. We're all leaders. We're all learners. We're all servants. Uh, we love to listen, and we love to speak. And I love the fact that I'm not just the person that just loves to speak. I'm not the person that just loves to share. I'm the person that loves to hear. So anytime you guys have any ideas of maybe anything you want me to touch on in a podcast, hey, I'm serious. Send us an email. I have a dynamic big team of people who will check the emails. And so if you get a chance to send me an email and say, hey, can you talk on this subject? You know, send it to customer service at identitynetwork.net. I'd be glad and honored to be able to have them forward it to me and me look at it and read it and see what I can uh, maybe get into and dive into to sort of hopefully answer your questions for you and maybe touch on a, a certain topic or subject that many of you probably have in your mind. I think a lot of us have these questions, but yet we're scared to ask the questions. Well, good thing is you don't have to worry about it. I won't tell your name over the podcast. Definitely. I'll just sort of read your question, answer it, you know, in one podcast or maybe several podcasts. It all depends on basically what you guys wanted to ask me or maybe how big and lengthy the subject of the topic may be, but I'll never, you know, disclose close your name, so don't worry about that. I'll always be able to, you know, hide it and uh, and just share the question, so don't feel like, oh, man, oh my goodness, I don't want to hear my name over the airwaves. This is an embarrassing question. Don't worry about it. I've been there. Trust me. But you know it's time in our lives that we've got to begin to face these questions, face the tough questions, not be afraid to ask them. You know, so many churches are afraid to touch on subjects, and, and of course, some churches really don't have the opportunity to actually go deeper. And one thing I've always challenged myself on within the ministry is to always go as deep as possible. Go as deep as we can because, you know, people have questions and it's great to know that we don't have to be so shallow. There's so much depth in God that we can be able to move into that place of really understanding that that deep crieth into deep. And so, you know, sometimes we don't really, we don't need to blame churches for not going so deep because sometimes when you have a big conglomeration of people, big congregation, you really just don't have the opportunity to really spend quality time and go deep with people. But, you know, the good thing about me is I've been there, done that. I was an assistant pastor for 15 years of a church that my friend and I started years ago and it was successful and you know that chapter uh, turned to my life years ago and and I realized I learned a lot of stuff within ministry you know even though we helped start the church but I learned a lot in ministry and I learned a lot to be able to realize that there's some things you just can't really afford to touch on in church you know and sometimes you don't have the opportunity or maybe the time to do it and so that's is where this ministry comes into play is I want to be that person that actually tackles questions for you the hard questions you know, and not be afraid to touch them. And here's the key thing. My personal opinion, my personal beliefs, my studies of Hebrew and Greek or science, whatever, you know, I can give you just basically my opinion. And I know when people sometimes they study and they say, this is the truth. This is the truth. I want somebody to say, never claim that power. That power. Never claim the power that you have the truth. Never claim the power. I know the truth. That's not, this is, it's not really good to say that because the truth is, if you know the truth and there's thousands of other people around you or throughout the world, maybe millions of people who don't see your point of view. Do they miss the truth and you have the truth? No. There's always sides of truth. There's always different points of truth. You know, we learn that from Jesus. I mean, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the truth. Truth is a person, folks. And when you understand that truth is a person, it's not a theology. It's not an answer. This is where people miss it. Truth is not an answer. Okay? Uh, You know, the Bible doesn't say the answer sets you free. The truth sets you free. And the truth is a person called Jesus. And so because of that, that that truth is actually not wrapped up in how much you studied, how much you um, have learned, how long you've been a Christian. It doesn't mean that you should claim, I know the truth about this. I know the truth about that. Even biblically, I think it's very wrong and almost like dishonoring to God to claim that type of power. You know, only God holds the power of the truth because He is the truth. And so I always tell people this. If you have something you want to share, you've learned, you know, like like myself, then I like to share that. And that way I'm not giving you necessarily the truth because you already know the truth in a person. I want to be able to give you some answers 
of things that maybe you can play around with in your mind and you can sort of you know conglomerate this whole you know uh, soup like a pot stirring it up of ideas you have and then that way you can sort of get before God yourself and find your own truth in the truth and that way you know that your truth sets you free you know if, if everyone in, in this is not my subject today but I want to tap on this for a moment if everyone understood that truth is a person and understood that truth is not an answer and truth is not like I've read the scripture so many times I know the truth of it you know that's very very dangerous to say I mean Jim Jones claimed you know he knew the truth and led people in drinking Kool-Aid you know in Jamestown you know we see so many people you know David um, you know Koresh in Waco Texas he claimed to know the truth and this guy folks was a scholar he actually knew the word I mean he knew the scriptures and and I was I remember watching a Waco which is a I think a series uh, it's a season series on Netflix I think they did a good job on it and it actually um, it was um, the movie was written from taken from two books which was one of the books uh, was written by the FBI guy that actually was on the outside of Waco Texas you know that cult and the other one was a guy who actually was in the, the building who actually happened to escape when it blew up and yet I don't know what his thinking is today but they took it to where it was balanced out with an outsider and an insider and they did a great job with it and you'll learn a lot from that. So my point being is when you learned about David Koresh in Waco, Texas, you, you understood that his group of people were not some, and pardon me for saying this because I don't want to classify people, but they weren't some backwoods rednecks. They weren't people that were uneducated, you know, one, teeth, one tooth in their head. And I don't mean that disrespectful. I'm just being sort of, I'm stereotyping, I know, but I'm sort of saying it in a sense to let you know these people were not like really uneducated people. These people were educated. I mean, there's some of them who are really educated. In fact, there was, a, there was one of them who was a professor of theology in Hawaii, for goodness sake, folks, that was wrapped up in that, and he went down. He went down with a fire, you know. And so there was a lot of them that were educated. So my point being is, it, education and, and and knowledge of what you claimed is the truth is not always the truth. And so you have to understand they're they're your answers. They're just answers you've learned that you can sort of wrap around your brain to say this is my answer. So it is sort of my truth uh, when it deals with the fact of how I live my life. But please, for God's sake, please don't don't issue your truth as the ultimate of truth of truths that, that everyone needs because that's very dangerous and I see people all the time in the ultra conservative Christian movement all the time who will claim that and they'll claim 101% that God sent Trump and, and the government is, is of the devil and this preacher is of God and this person's of you know of the devil. It's just so dangerously to say stuff like that. It's so dangerous. Why don't we just say, you know what, Here, here's, here's what we need to say. We need to say, you know what, the these people or this person or that person was inspired by God. That's the best way to say it. They're inspired by God. Because we're living in a culture and a time frame where we can't really prove, no matter how much people say, I had a dream. I don't care about your dream. No offense. I have one of my closest friends in New York who I interpret dreams for, and I have I interpret dreams all day long. I've been doing it for 30 years. And so I pretty much can hear from the Lord on, the, on that area. But my point being is I don't put faith and power and, and, and trust and 100% of faith and, I mean, excuse me, of visions and dreams and I heard God, you heard God, they heard God, you know, uh, and I know it because I've studied. I don't put I don't put faith in any of that stuff to the point where it's a truth. I put faith in it to know it's the revelation we've received, but I would never claim it to be the truth. The truth is a very, very selective, powerful thing to claim because, because truth, once again, is not an answer. It's not your conclusion. It is a person. It's not words. It's not a definition of knowledge. It is a person called Jesus. So there is a big difference between the truth and answers. And so whatever is your truth that you have cultivated and put it together within you, then you live your truth out loud. If it's a truth that is part of the absolute truth of the person called Jesus, then it will set you free. And that, and how you know you're set free is the fruit you'll bear forth, the love you demonstrate to the to the world, the love you demonstrate to your neighbor, your enemy. I mean, on and on and on. Compassion, grace, mercy, going the extra mile for people. You know, uh, all the humility, decrease, the decrease that God can increase in you. A truth is actually spread abroad in these type of demonstrations, these type of characteristics and personalities that, that God is created within us to, to, to live out and to find. And so therefore, because of that, I would say make sure that you are 
taking with you today some great things. And as I speak a little bit today on certain subjects, I want you to begin to sort of just take with you the idea that, you know what, maybe this might be something that I can incorporate in my life that helps answer some questions. This might help you to cultivate and sort of, you know, uh, put together a lot of your pieces of the puzzle of your own truth that Christ has given you. And that way, you can claim your truth without hurting and damaging other people as if they happen to have to, to know your truth because your truth will set them free always. And your truth is the ultimate of ultimates. And let's just face it. Here's where here's where it gets sticky. I'll just say this real quick and we'll pop in and pop out of this. Is realizing what pride is. Okay, Pride actually is a know-it-all attitude. It's a, I can do better. I can, you know, everything else. And pride can disguise itself in so many different ways. So is pride when I say, oh my gosh, I know the truth. You've got to know the truth. Is that pride? 101% it is. Absolutely it is. 100% it is. Because of the fact that pride never, but pride claims to be at the end result. Pride claims to know the finish line of it. And here's why I say this to you. For example, if someone is, and when someone says, all the rich people, they're all stuck up. They worship money. Is that true? Absolutely not. I know a lot of great rich people who are dynamic and humble and sweet and kind and love Jesus, you know? But they just happen to be wealthy. Uh, but is that true? No. But that's sort of the stereotypical part of people who are poor and don't have a lot of money that think that, right? The rich people don't think that. Poor people think that. But here's where pride actually gets into, and that's a type of pride, when a person is that haughty because they have money and they think they're, they're entitled and everything. That's pride. But pride also, and here's the deal, deal that you have to remember, is when it deals with the love of money, pride also uh, embeds itself in other areas of our lives. Okay, it, it, it involves different parts of the aspects of our lives. When it deals with the me syndrome, the me syndrome, I, 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 we think the me syndrome is actually... Um, you know, that type of part of us that sort of, um, you know, says, you know, how good I am and how great I am. But yet the truth is, you know, so many people also look at themselves and say, I'm horrible. I'm no good at, I'm not no good at something. I can't do this. I can't do this. I don't have the money. I don't have this. Well, guess what? You are speaking out of a prideful mentality. Really, Jeremy? Absolutely you are. Because once again, it still bulls back and, and it circles around to you. See, when somebody, here's a key thing people realize. When you do studies on the word pride, you realize how deadly and dangerous and how uh, pride is and how much it actually disguises itself. So the pride actually it revolves around the I syndrome, the me, me, me syndrome, me, myself, and I. And so it doesn't mean, oh, I'm gorgeous. Oh, I'm wonderful. Oh, I have a perfect body. Oh, I'm rich. Oh, I'm better than anybody else. That's, that's, a, that's a very outward part of pride we, we, we're used to and seeing. But yet you also deal with pride and the love of money and these type of things when a person says, I'm never be anything. Oh, I have a horrible body. Look at me. I look horrible. You know, I'll never amount to anything. I'm stupid. Notice how all that still revolves around the same thing that the rich people, not the rich people, but the prideful people that we are used to seeing in an outward expression way, it still revolves around the me, 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 the I, I, I. And so you see, you have to realize what what pride does and selfishness and, and the love of money and all these different things dwell in, it doesn't mean that person's going to be all always saying the positive, the negative of that actually is still pride as well. Because once again, you're still revolving around the I syndrome. If it's always about you, even if it's negative, doesn't mean you're not prideful. Doesn't mean you don't have a, a love of yourself. It's because you're still revolving your world around you. It's just in a negative way, right? So I want you to begin to sort of run with that today and understand that it truly is a disguising mask way that we don't, we're do not we not used to looking at it. But I want you today to see that and recognize that. Because when we're dealing with truth, for example, and pride, we have to remember that when somebody claims, I know the truth, then the truth is that's sort of pride because how dare you claim to know the absolute truth. And then here's what people turn around and say, well, the Bible says it. Well, the Bible says it. Okay, so the Bible says a lot of things, yes, but how? But what you're saying is you claim to know what the Bible is saying. The truth is we're all learning. We're all evolving. We're all growing. We're all trying to work out our own salvation for in trembling. So how dare us claim that power as if we know exactly what a scripture says when we don't? Because we're ever going to be learners and followers and servants. Even great servants from uh, great leaders are made from great servants. You know, uh, even G even the Bible even mentions uh, you know who's the least of them. In other words, who's back of the 
line, they're the ones that are going to be first. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. And so you can tell right there that even, even the Bible, even Christ is letting you know, this. my kingdom is a backwards kingdom. It's a totally backwards kingdom. So when you claim out of your pride that you know something, maybe it's backwards. Maybe what, he's, what you're saying is you really don't know. But you're standing on, a, on something to claim that you do know. Why? Simply because of the fact that it builds you up as being educated. It builds you up as being smart. It builds you up as if, because some people have low self-esteem where they have to move in that, that I syndrome, that mentality of, I know the truth. Oh, I, the, I know the Bible says. I know what the scripture says. Then when, what you're doing is you're building yourself up because you're, you're really deep inside. You're nothing but a child. You're nothing but maybe, uh, maybe you might be an immature. Maybe you're covering up for you know a fault that you feel is um, you know that you've done. Maybe you maybe you're covering up your guilt. You know, uh, maybe you're covering up you know your low self esteem. But the t- bottom line is, the truth is, with you is and me is we can't when we claim that. Well, why would we claim that? We're claiming that because we need other people to validate us and to say, "Wow, you know the truth." Oh, teach me, master. <laughs> you know, that's sort of the idea we were, we're hoping and praying that maybe people will, will do to us, right? Here's my th- idea. I don't want anyone to feel that way with me. I don't want anyone to feel as if, wow, man, you know the truth. I would be more impressed with people because that to me is something I don't, I can't, I can't handle. I don't like. I don't want to say I despise it. It sounds a little mean to say I despise it, but I can't tolerate it. Because what I'd rather have people walk, right, walk away from me to say is, you know what? He's educated or he's enlightened or he's got revelation that really touched my life and it caused me to find my my own truth. It caused me to find my own path in God. It, find, it caused me to, to really be seeking after the Holy Spirit and the things that God's kingdom. That's what I want people to walk away with. Not that like, oh my God, he knew the truth and he plowed, the, plowed everybody's heart and planet, planet Earth with the truth. You know, because who am I to do that? Who am I to claim to know the ultimate truth? And yet, I guess there's seven billion people around me just stupid. It goes back to the eight to the thing when you know when I hear this in life coaching, people say to me, which is very rare, very very rare, when someone says, "I'm being persecuted for my faith." Really? Well, how are you being persecuted for your faith? Well, I take a Bible to work, and I always preach about Jesus at work, and so I'm being persecuted. No, maybe you're being annoying. Maybe you're being very annoying because, truthfully, the job, the workplace, is not a place. To read your Bible. That's called thievery. And the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Because what you're doing is you're acting so much like an antichrist because you take your work to, your Bible to work and you're trying to read it on the clock. You're stealing someone else's money. You're stealing someone else's time. Now, if you take it, leave it in your car, sit in your car, read it you know, during lunch, or maybe you find yourself at a place where you're sitting and you're reading maybe you know, uh, lunch at your desk you know, quietly, the moment you know, your lunch breaks over, you close your Bible, put it away, you start working, hey, you know what, then you're the one I'm not talking to. But a lot of people don't realize that, that you're, that's thievery. You're stealing from a company. So you're acting like you know, the enemy. You're still killing destroy. And probably your aggressiveness is not a using wisdom. Why is a serpent gentle as a dove? So maybe your aggressiveness is very annoying and gets on people's nerves. And trust me, even the most strongest of strongest Christians, it gets on my nerves if you do that to me. Because even though I can say I'm on fire for God, I'm prophet of God, I know this, I know that, I'm a life coach, I'm close to the Lord, everything else, well, that's great and wonderful, but you can still annoy me with this, with your theology. You can still annoy me with constantly badgering and talking about, you know, something of the God's kingdom when it deals with the fact of why you try what are you trying to prove to me? You do want me to look at you as if you're very smart and wise and wow, I stand in awe at your at your glory, you know? You know what I mean? It's a difference in, in just really approaching somebody and having a dynamic, powerful conversation about the kingdom of God. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll, I can do it all day long. But the key thing is pride and egotism and, and, and trying to find the flattery within yourself and trying to have people to to think that you're just so smart and you're so on fire. If you've got to prove that to your, to, your, to other people, maybe you're not on fire. Maybe you're just insecure. Maybe you're just a child sitting in a corner, you know, um, sort of waddled, you know, cuddled up in a, cor- in a corner. That's really how you really are inside. And you're trying to mask it for other people giving you accolades and validation. You know what I mean? You have to be careful about this kind of stuff, folks, because it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. What's, what's worth the kingdom of God is when you decrease, and you decrease, and you allow Him to increase in you. When people tell me, and no offense, folks, I want everybody and everyone to know, I pray for my president. I pray for my president. But I do not honor him any more than I do did, did Obama or Bush or anyone else because I don't exalt man. I don't exalt men. I don't make them idols. And when somebody says, he was sent by God. Well, you know what? So is Obama. 
Ooh, that touched a lot of nerves there. I know a lot of you people are like, I better get off this podcast from Jeremy. Why? Because I'm giving you scripture because the Bible says that it's God who exalts kings and God who raises them up and God who, bring, God who brings them down. So the same God who raised up your Trump is the same God who raised up Obama, the same God who raised up Bush, the same God who raised up Reagan, the same God who raised up Clinton. Yes, ooh, did I just say that? I sure did, didn't I? Wow. You know why? Because it's the Bible. <laughs> and so therefore, I don't, I don't alter, I don't, I don't put a man on a, on a pedestal and say, He's Cyrus. He's Moses. All these other name, it, all these other typologies people want to come up with. I'm thinking, quit, quit bringing people in the Old Testament up in the New Testament for goodness' sake, folks. Let people be who they are, you know. And I just feel like this. I think God uses him and uses everybody else. God used Obama. Sorry, sorry, sorry for those really ultra conservative people. But God used Obama. God used Bush. God used Reagan. Uh, you might say, oh, you sound Democrat. I'm neither Democrat or Republican. I don't care for earthly childish parties. If you think Fox is holy and CNN. Is, is deceived, you're deceived because Fox is just as, as manipulative and as dirty and as low down as CNN is. So yes, I said it and I don't mind. I'll go on record to say that because if you trust media, period, media is nothing more than filling your ears full of what you what they want you to know. So no, I, I don't come from the kingdom of this world but I will tell you what I do. I do bless people. I bless all pastors. I bless all, pr- all presidents. I bless all. I bless governments. I bless people in general. I bless all media. I just don't entertain myself with the earthliness of exalting men and exalting parties. And exa- I just to me, it's like it's very dangerous. I'm not from this world. So why would I do that if I'm not from this world? Hello, can I, can you hear me? I'm too busy working out my own salvation, being Christ. And that's the point I'm making today is understand the powerful uh, truth that you are cultivating in you that works for you. And then helping disciple. Notice something about, about the kingdom of God. Notice how it never says, that was my soapbox earlier, by the way, guys, for some of you on this podcast. Notice how you read and you study the scriptures where it never says, uh, go into all, you know, Jesus didn't send them two and two by two out in the world and say, go teach him the truth. Notice that? Notice Jesus never said, go teach him the truth. Notice Jesus never, never said, now disciples, I give you today the truth. Go and spread the truth. No, he never said that. He says, go and make disciples of all men. Make disciples. Because see, it's harder to make a disciple than it is shoving your truth down someone's throat because all this, because all, because of, through manipulation and, and, and air egotism and everything else and pride. That's easy to do, folks. That's really easy to do. I can convince anyone to, to drink my Kool Aid. <laughs> I mean, no, no offense, but I can easily manipulate and drink and tell everyone to drink my Kool Aid. But that's not what I want to do. What I'd rather do is I'd rather make disciples. Make disciples into the, th- into the aspect of saying, and look, question everything. Don't be afraid to question everything. Go and reason with God. The Bible says, come and reason with me. Work out your own salvation, friend trembling. Cultivate your own personality. Find your own originality. Find the place in you where you can be able to be all things to all people. Find the place in you where you're able to discover your truth and know the difference between truth and answers to where people, you can live your life out loud without opening and spewing out your theology out of your mouth to convince other people because you're insecure. No, that's not, that's not what I want to teach. I want to teach the other things I just mentioned about discipleship because that's the thing that I believe everyone needs is to understand how to be all things to all people, how to love and go the extra mile, how to raise up you know, Christ within their, in their lives by decreasing, being a servant of God, never claiming that you, you have the power of all the truth in the universe, never claiming you know the Bible in its fullest entirety, but claiming you know the truth called a person. And that truth, that person has a voice. That truth has a voice that I want to introduce you to. That way you and him can reason. And that way you and him can talk about. And he can tell you what you need to believe for you. He can tell you what you need for your life versus the idea of what I know that I think you need. Because I don't know what you need. And see, it's a disrespect to you. Here's the thing people don't realize. It's a disrespect to you, folks. If I was to tell you, I know what you need in your life. I know because I... No, you don't know. Unless you're in my body or you're my husband, you're my wife, you slept with me for 30 years, you don't know what I need. Okay? So therefore, you know what? What I need to do is I need to bless you by living my life out loud and see, letting my fruit go before me. Letting my fruit go before me, walking in the Beatitudes, walking out, uh, working out my own salvation for entry, and moving in the fruit of God. That's what you need to see today. That's my prayer. And that's what I, that's, that truly makes disciples when I teach them and educate them about how to be able to discover this amazing truth called Jesus. That's the, the greatest thing, gift of, of life. And so, 
When we deal with attraction, law of attraction, like we say, thoughts become things. There you go right there, folks. Living it out loud. Attracting attracting your truth to you where people can see the reality of the things that are setting you free. The life that you're living that is, that is freeing you. If you want the truth to set you free, then free yourself up from theology. Free yourself up from, from claiming you know everything. The moment you claim to know the truth, you, what you're saying is, I'm at the end of my rope. In other words, I've finished, I've, I've at the crossroads. I'm at the, uh, the end of uh, the finish line. Which means, I've done. I'm done. I've got it all. And you cease to be a seeker. A seeker. You cease to be one who is ever learning. So if you claim to know the truth, that means you're claiming to have the end result of that. And then you're claiming you're, you're, that you're, that you're hard-headed and, and you're claiming you don't, you don't need anything else because you're claiming, I don't need to learn anything else because I know the truth. Very, very, very dangerous, folks. Live your life loud with your love. Live your life loud with your fruit and your grace because people need to see that power because love covers a multitude of sin and that's the grace of God upon our lives is leaning not to understanding but all of our ways just acknowledge Him. Acknowledging Him and living Him out loud. Folks, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope it was a blessing to you. I know sometimes I tend to get a little bit over the all over the place and get a little messy with my, my talks, but you know, it's good. It's good that we just sit down and talk sometimes in our podcast and just enjoy enjoy life, the life God's died to give us and life more abundantly. And having these talks, having these conversations that can challenge us. And once again, folks, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink the, don't drink the, don't drink the, drink the Kool-Aid of the ultra-liberals and don't drink the Kool-Aid, hello, of the ultra-conservatives. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, folks, okay? Find it in yourself where you're not being disrespected by people and dishonored by people by telling you that they can help you with you finding you and you knowing what to believe. If someone's convincing you, if Fox or CNN is convincing you what to believe, here's what they're telling you. I dishonor you, I disgrace you, and I'm running over you today because I'm telling you what to believe. Don't. Why would you allow someone to come into your home? Pardon my language to say this to you, but you wouldn't allow somebody to rape you, would you? You wouldn't allow somebody to rape your children, would you? That might sound harsh and gross, and it is harsh and gross. But the truth is, would you allow that? Or would you or you'd be like, you know, oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> you, know, and, and, you know what I'm saying. Blank, no. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Because that infuriates you. But yet you'd let people do it to you every day. You let people take advantage of you and pretty much rape your memory every single day by being a puppet to the media on both sides and being a puppet to this political system. I mean, you're better than that, folks. You're smarter than that. You're not you're 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 a grown adult. Don't allow people to do that to you. Take your value and your worth back and take your beliefs back of what you know God has put in your heart to believe, all right? And and live that out loud. If you're part of the kingdom that's not of this world, then start acting like it. Okay, quit acting like you're in the kingdom of America. I'm not part of America. I'm not. Oh my God, did he say that? Yes, I love America, but I'm not part of America. I'm not part of anything. I am part of everything in this universe, and yet I'm part of none of it. I am part of the kingdom of God. I am I am distributing the power of God's kingdom in my life to do signs, wonders, and miracles and to be able to go around in healing and, and doing good and, and healing all that are sick and oppressed the devil. That's my goal in life. Jesus never said to be a part of this kind of crazy, messed up news that we were so in. So, you know, don't let people rape your, like, rape your mind. You're better than that. When I see people do that, I'm thinking, wow, what a poor puppet. What a poor puppet they've become. That's not you who you are, folks. Rise against that. Rise above that. And speak your, speak your truth in the sense of just living it out loud and let other people see and glorify your God in heaven. So you guys have a blessed week today. Thank you again for tuning into our podcast. And uh, once again, as always, if you're not on the Hot Off the Press Monthly Book Club, please get involved in it because every month you'll get one of my books, my latest and greatest books, and I'll have them autographed for you. We'll send them out to you on the program, and you'll get free shipping. You'll get the free ebook, and sometimes I send out comprehensive study guides and workbooks with it. And when you do, you get that free of charge. Accompany the book that, and, you know, that you're on, that you're getting as well. And if you're not on the month, monthly book club, shame on you. You have to pay full price for the study guide, all right, and the workbook. So, look, you guys get a part of that. Be a part of it, all right? Have a blessed, wonderful day. Know how much I love you. Know how much that God loves you. But also today, walk away with the mentality to take back your love and take back your rights by loving yourself and quit being a puppet to the media and to political parties, all right? You are better than that. Have a blessed day. 
This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.